Welcome everybody to December 3rd distribution demo. Uh, I'm going to be going over the charts MR1642. This is the implementation of the generator pattern for web service and an example configuration that is near production for what we'll use it as. Uh, we're going to do a deployment and then look and make sure that all the traffic is being sent in the right directions, that when we try to do a get pull over HTTPS, that results in it going specifically to the get fleet, that we try to do API calls, and those all specifically go to the externally exposed API fleet. And then we make sure that all the resources, such as CSS, HTML, graphics, are coming from the default or web fleet. One additional fleet that we'll actually have is an internal API. That fleet's job will explicitly be to answer all the internal API calls from Gitly, GitLab Shell, and any other component that actually needs to speak directly to the API. Therefore, we're not going out of the cluster and back in for that traffic. And we have a dedicated set of nodes that we know is coming from intra-component communication. So I don't actually have this deployed. I've got a fresh setup of cluster right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a Helm install. Well, in my default configuration, this has my domain configuration, cert manager, et cetera. And then I pull in my production config which we have right here, which basically shows me setting all the internal web service endpoints to use the internal API. And then my configuration of the deployments object inside of web service. I have a default, which will basically be the quintessential catch-all, anything that's not picked up by one of the other paths the API, which will catch anything that's under slash API. Get, which actually comes from a comment in this MR from what we were doing for past testing. Although I can't find the comment at the moment. So this is a, a complex regex path that is used and consumed by Nginx that allows us to pull all of the specific ones. We actually use this now for the HTTPS fleet in production. And then the last one I have here is internal API. And the one thing I want to call out here is that you'll notice that path while present is explicitly nil. That means that it will not create an ingress resource and it will not be exposed outside of the cluster through the Nginx. Although it probably helps if I actually save the file before I Boy, we're going to find out how many do I have here. Yeah, I probably need to deploy it with setting save. Now, what we should end up seeing is a deployment, a service, and an ingress, HPA, and disruption budget for each of these individual web service deployments. Um, we're not currently separating out the config map. We're not currently separating out the network policy or any other item that is not justifiably needed to be generated for every single deployment. It's not that it's not possible to do excuse me, not possible to do so. It's let's not change more things than we absolutely must for a first iteration. And as this is already a very complex set of changes, the impact is large. So let's minimize that until we need to make further changes. over in the pods here. Okay, 
going to go ahead and run Stern. And this is actually selecting all because all I did was use the app label. So every pod that is in the web service chart will have the app equals web service. I could pull out a specific one by actually using a label that is declared for uh, each individual deployment. We do that actually by an additional label that's added based, here we are, based on which web service fleet that you're actually going to get. So if I wanted to do the same thing, I could pull just the Git fleet by pulling it by the name of the deployment for that web service section. Okay, we appear to be almost all the way up and running. We have enough pods that we can answer questions or should say answer queries through the browser. So let's go ahead and give that a shot at this point. So when I am navigating to administrator test, we're seeing that most of the traffic is going through default and there are some requests that go through API. Where's the API run through? No, oh, looks like I'm just gonna have to do separate ones because that's gonna be too hard to keep separated. One second. Save myself some time here. We'll make this easy. There we go. I'll admit I'm a little confused on what just happened here. This is all just readiness checks because this is the Git fleet. It shouldn't be getting any real traffic. API is getting some calls, as you can see here. Probably would be handy to find a way to filter out all the readiness and liveness calls. Okay, so. Everything is functioning here. Again, we can see Git's not getting anything except lightness and readiness probes. Internal API should be getting some things back. Is this me or is this master being weird? I think I've got a mismatch in container versions, maybe. Because I've got at least something that's not pulling an asset. I'm getting 404s from multiple pieces of JS.
Okay. I'm going to double check my values. Make sure I have image pool policy set, just in case I'm running somehow mismatched versions of workhorse and web service containers. That may be the case. I don't apparently have image pool policy set. Let's just get fresh containers. This is a classic problem, and it's it's primarily because I'm actually not using a tagged version of the images. I'm using the master because the nodes will think that they already have that image without pull policy always. It will just reuse the one that's already there, and you can have an instance where it has pulled an updated copy on one node but not on the other node. Of course, now we just wait for it to roll all the containers and rails to start up because we know that takes a minute.
what I'm waiting for in particular is for this last old default fleet to roll out so that I don't inadvertently hit traffic to that one and get the assets problem. My UI works again. OK, so apologies for that delay. Now then, the things that we're going to be looking for are who gets the traffic on the API and who gets the traffic for default from the UI itself. If I navigate into Migrations, we should see a bit of traffic come across on the default to get all the assets. Internal API should have gotten a request. Okay, that definitely should have gotten a request. Why it didn't show up, I don't know. We'll look at that in a minute. Oh, because I'm looking at internal API. Looking at the wrong tab. So you can see here, API v4 definitely goes there. And a bunch of stuff happens when you actually load a projects page. I'm going to go ahead and grab the clone URL. And for this, I am going to watch here. That HTTPS request should have resulted in Get, getting the fleet request here. Maybe my regex is not working. Maybe I'm missing something. Who got the request? Default ended up with a request. Okay, we'll have to figure that one out. We may have a regex issue. So let me go ahead and make sure that I have a SSH key loaded. I do. So I should be able to
do need to change my remote though. Apparently the back and forward buttons are doubling on my mouse today. There it is. Here we have the internal API calls from GitLab shell and Giddily actually coming through the internal API. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, there are ingresses that are defined. What we can see here is that there are three of them that are defined on the GitLab hostname. These each operate individually in order to route the traffic. If I describe one, what you'll see is we have the backends defined for going specifically to the service, which currently has this service IP address. If I do this for each one, I can go into this, them and you'll see the same thing. What I want to call out for visibility is that whatever is default, whatever fleet has slash actually also exposes the slash admin sidekick. Um, we have to have somewhere to route it. And generally, wherever the web UI is, that's where you want that traffic going through. So at the moment, whichever fleet gets slash, and at least one has to have slash for a path, that will also get the traffic for the sidekick admin. So this is the one thing that I'm going to have to look into and I'll need a little investigation. Uh, when I was testing this prior, I was just doing the direct match on effectively this set of the regex that's present. Uh, I can flip that and we'll see if that fixes everything or not. But my expectation at that point is that I just didn't have it. I don't have the right regex in place or it's malformed in some fashion and Nginx is not happy with it. Um, because I know that I definitely was seeing get traffic going to a single place before. Anybody have any questions, observations? Anyone? Okay, what I've done is manually edited that ingress. I didn't edit the chart config just to speed up the process. And hopefully this uh, API path or this path will be more correct than the one that we were seeing that had a problem. I've pulled up the logs from the ingress controller just to make sure that we see that it gets reloaded and we'll be able to figure out, turning on log wrap and make it full screen. We should now be able to figure out where the get request for HTTPS actually gets sent.
Okay, so these are the Git requests that should have triggered to go through the Git fleet. And they were forwarded over to 4247. Yeah, looks like all of them were routed to there. Now we can figure out where that comes from. By looking at the cluster IP, 4247 is default. So I still have to figure out what's going on pathwise here. This looks like it's a me configuration. Does anyone have any questions or comment about the size of the impact on this or why this is, we're doing something that is this large? Did you mention already if this was gonna be part of a major chart release or what's the plan there? This is not intended to be a part of a major chart release uh, because the way this is done we're actually inheriting from the chart properties in the event that you don't specify a deployments object, you will get a default object that gets inserted um, and pull all of those values in. So there is nothing that actually changes for someone who is directly upgrading from not having this configured to having this configured. So if you go from, what are we at? Four, six, one to master, you'll see no real change in terms of how your configuration needs to be. And, hmm, let me correct that. There is the one notice of the that I actually have here, which is of the blip, because all of the resource names actually change. Where you previously had GitLab web service for the service name, the deployment name, all the pods, they now change to GitLab web service default. And as a result, you can see a blip during the upgrade to the minor, to whatever the minor version is that we release this in. Um, that blip is small, but it is, it is a short downtime window because all of the resources are created. It isn't a roll from one version to the new version. So yeah, there is that impact. Okay. From the, the maintenance standpoint, one of the biggest differences in how this works is uh, distribution will remember the joy of multi Redis support and the, the things that happened there. Maintaining that functionality and figuring out a way to do it at the time was done in a short period and not necessarily an easy to follow methodology on, on how it works. In an attempt to deal with that, uh, what we've actually done here is take the properties, template them into YAML, and then actually read that YAML back in. Um, so that instead of trying to do merges and copying values, which we know inside of GoTemplate is a dangerous thing, um, because deep copy isn't present until later versions of Helm. And we have had, at least in the past, customers on versions of Helm that did not support this. So we couldn't use that functionality. Um, this MR continues that line of thinking where we may have someone still using something as old as Helm 2.14. It does not support deep copy. It does not support deep merge appropriately because it doesn't have deep copy. Add to that the fact that deep merge doesn't have the ability to actually pull a quote empty value from the source. So if you have the chart level setting set to true, but then you have an individual deployment with a value set to false, the false would actually always lose because it's considered empty. The implementation that's done here does two things we add a 
Okay, my browser's not cooperating with me right now. We actually are adding a template in here that's called data model. Inside of that is a prepare that will pull those values in and do a merge. But specifically what we're doing to get the ability to use overwrite empty behaviors is to actually implement that merge pattern ourselves. I don't love doing this, but we need this functionality now and it's not even in 3.4 of Helm. So that would be dragging people all the way up to the latest version, which they're probably not ready to do. And it requires additional changes to Sprig. So we would actually have to go three layers deep in API there to get this functionality. So in order to get this done now, we've actually done this. And what we do is we actually do a from YAML on include to get the data model blank. The data model blank is what actually pulls in the values from the upper chart. Um, one nice thing about this is it actually allows us to relocate certain properties to be better structured. And then we turn around, read that back into an object from YAML and then merge the settings provided by the user with this blank that is the inherited values. This process very specifically does do one thing where if both of them are not maps, always take the source's value. It doesn't matter if it's true, false, whatever. If source has a value defined at all, take that value. That way source always wins, AKA overwrite even if it's empty. If it is a map, it will then recurse into that map. That way we can do a deep merge following this overwrite empty behavior without losing anything. As a result of that, you don't cleanly have a way to nil a map. So if that merge will always happen with all the keys. You can't overwrite the map. You either have to nil it or not inherit anything, which means not defining it at the, at the parent chart. Well, if there are no other questions, then I will go ahead and call it a day. And now that everything is, is actually working as intended with the exception of whatever my ingress path is for Git, then I would call it a relatively successful demo. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jason.